Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to that one awkward guy. Today we're going to be continuing our series in Hearts of Iron 4 as Russia with the Millennium Dawn Modern Day Mod. In the last episode we began step one of our kind of end plan here which was to create um, a super puppet in the Southeast Asian region and then we're going to be going on to China and um, probably into the Middle East and then we'll be going over uh, to fight NATO. Um, you might be noticing a little bit of a discrepancy between the date between uh, world tension, manpower, that's because I played the game for about a year because I know everybody wants to see the build up, but it wasn't really build up, it was just me sitting there waiting for the world tension to go down, and for my sake it's really hard to find stuff to talk about when all that's happening is this number in the top right corner is ticking down a little bit every month, so I waited a little bit just for that to get below 30, and now that it is, we're going to start justifying and doing some more stuff. Uh, to address some of the comments, though, I know somebody said that Laos can be invited to the faction. They theoretically can, but they wouldn't want to. Negative 50 is not something easy to overcome. Even base reluctance at minus 20, the best we can get is tie that. And then the whole war thing, unless they are in a war, they're unlikely to join. So, uh, as much as I would like to do that because it would be a lot quicker, it isn't something that we're realistically going to be able to do. Unless something, unless when I go to war here, they really want to join for some reason. So let's just go ahead and justify. 40 days. Uh, other than that, we are almost finished. As you can also see, we have four armies now. Our last army is uh, building up, which means we'll have two army groups. And we'll probably wait a little bit uh, until after the war with China to begin building our third army group. Because they are expensive, especially in manpower. Um, but we're... Almost through our upgrades, this got an upgrade, our light mechanized uh, tanks, we're getting some progress on that, um, planes are all good, I added a few new ships, so we're also producing, you're not supposed to be missile cruisers, you, oops, you are battle cruisers, um, what, battle cruiser, why, oh it is, they're both considered missile cruisers, even though this one's battle cruiser, okay, I was just seeing the middle cruiser, missile cruiser, cruiser, missile cruiser there and I got somewhat confused but that's all good um, but yeah other than that everything's doing good we have a really good stockpile of everything <laughs> I think I might be overcompensating a bit with support equipment though I think I think we have enough I might actually just cut that down and give the additional stuff to our infantry infantry equipment because that's what actually needs upgrades right now whereas support equipment will never be upgraded so yeah, not a concern. So let's see. You have a lot of divisions. That's terrifying. Uh, not a lot of factories, though, so I'm going to assume that's mostly, and it is, mostly infantry, very few tanks, no air force, no navy, limited manpower. I might bring a third division down to help me deal with this, though. Just to make sure I'm hoping the infrastructure can handle that. I've also been doing some infrastructure work, by the way. I'm um, exploiting a few resources, uh, building up our supply in NATO so that way none of our... I noticed Serbia was having attrition, so I was building up some infrastructure to help get them a better supply line, as well as for my own troops. So, um, Yeah, that's mostly the building stuff I've been doing, because I'm so hesitant to be using all of these building slots. I know I should be. But I'm very scared too because I know they're just going to get bombed once the war starts. I don't really need more factories right now, I'm not going to lie. Infrastructure is the bigger uh, problem. We're producing a lot of stuff. And I'm pretty sure we're probably the biggest industry in the world at this point. Maybe, if not second. But there's justification. Um, second maybe only to China or US. I'm not sure who would be more powerful. In fact, let's check. United States. Between 165 and 224. Okay, so right off the bat, China is likely bigger. And 187 to 225. One okay, so they're probably... U.S. might have a little bit of an edge on civilian factories, but China has the edge on military factories. And if we go over to me... Bit of a spike there. I'm probably in the mix. It's hard to tell with the military factories. China might be a little bit better. Um, but I am probably, yeah, I'm certainly better on civilian factories than both of them, which is good because come wartime, if I need more, I can just convert all my civilian factories to military factories, um, as needed. So, oh, I noticed we have some, do we have all 24? Nope, 12, waiting on some more. 
Um, and somebody also commented in um, about my division said I should delete a lot of these. I'll delete that one actually. Um, delete all of these. The reason I'm not is because I don't want to go through all of these guys and figure out which one is each of them because a lot of them reuse the same or a similar kind of marker here. Um, mostly I've been building these four divisions. I don't know. They look decent. I'm not the best at division creation, so I'll just show everybody these. I should probably also put you on default. Um, you guys can let me know if these are particularly bad or need any work, but these are the ones. Actually, that one's not great. I might fix that one later, but <clears throat> yeah, these are the ones I've mostly been using. I try not to use those. It's just those are the ones that are in my armies, and I don't want to go sort through them all, because that's quite annoying to do. Are you there yet? You're still arriving. How long do I have this war goal for? I don't want to lose it. We have it till April. So, Alright, you have time. You really should just strategically redeploy there. Be significantly quicker. I don't know why the AI doesn't automatically do that. There you go. Oh, I think I heard the rest of the troops deploying. Okay, so we have another full army group now. That is wonderful. So that puts our army at over 2 million men. And our navy is at 51,000. And what was our force? 44,000? 48,000. So we're getting more powerful. Alright, so you guys are joining in. And I'm not going to wait too much longer because I want to try to finish this in this episode, right? We still have to get some... Yeah, Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia. This is taking a lot longer than I'd expected. And as I mentioned, I'm on a time limit here until um, February 28th. So that's when the new DLC releases, Man the Guns. And that's when the save will most likely break. So let's see. You consider it to be risky. You consider it to be risky. You consider it to be risky. I don't care. You'll have planes. It'll probably be okay. So, who will we call in? I'm willing to call in Myanmar, obviously, because they need to push from their border. And British Raj, because they'll send a lot of troops to help. Alright, let's give this a shot. Alright, pushing through in two loca four locations. Oh, that's dropped down to two. That's alright, though. Alright, call in the Air Force. Put it in the proper spot. Let's see how that helps. Alright, looks like we're breaking through here pretty well. There we go. Now we're getting the advantage. I just, I just don't want to be losing. Oh, we've already lost a division. Okay, are these guys not aggressive? Because that would be why they're losing divisions. They are. Let's turn them off that for now. That's, that's really not necessary and we're losing divisions and I don't particularly enjoy replacing them all the time there we go nice little pocket come on we didn't need to do that we didn't need to launch nukes that wasn't necessary and another one right on where my troops are great <sighs> all right keep the advance going just stop nuking everything we we're doing just fine okay there we go there's the win all right pass 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 Boom. Is that it? That is it. Perfect. Wow, that's a lot of equipment. Alright, so next we're going to be working on Laos. Now, one thing I do need to be at least prepared for, and this is what I'm actually going to call in more divisions this time. Let's actually put three there. And I'm going to just blanket the area with new infrastructure. Um, one of the things I need to be prepared for is the possibility that we're going to see... I'm sorry, I'm just deciding where I want to put my ports here, so... Uh, not on the border, let's throw one right there. Um, one thing we have to be prepared for is Vietnam has a faction, and when we see that Laos is at war, they become more likely to join a faction. And then there's you know, convenient faction over here, directly to their east, you know, Vietnam with a relatively powerful military, so it is entirely possible that we're going to see um, Vietnam join in, um, bring them into their faction, and declare war on us. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that happened. I don't know if maybe putting troops on the border will discourage them from doing that, but it's something 
Um, let's get a division here that we have to be prepared for. Let's get that anti-air upgrade. Um, because, yeah, the reason they won't join us is because they have no reason to. If we're at war, that's a deterrent for them to join. If they're at war, it's encouraging, but the only way they go to war is if I declare war on them. Because nobody's declaring war in this, on this game for some reason. Like, literally, no wars have happened since... I think I've instigated every single war. I'm pretty sure. Um, which I don't know, because I know everybody has national focuses to do wars, but I guess conveniently every AI just has chosen not to. I don't know, it's, it's quite weird. Anyway though, the, our reinforcements are heading down now, but I'm willing to bet none of them are strategically redeploying, are they? No, they are not. So we are going to do that for them, so they get here a little bit quicker. Boom. That should speed them up a little bit. Let's actually check our production as well. So that's getting upgrades now. This is a 10, that's not bad. Tanks will be done pretty soon when we can stop piling the new stuff. And then infantry equipment. Oof, it's still taking its time, but it'll get there. And then we'll, as soon as that's done, we'll have the next level of infantry equipment, most likely, because I think we're pretty close to being able to do it. Yeah, pretty close. Um, oh, another thing. In the last episode, I was hitting the decrease communist influence button, but I realized there's no increase. So I looked, and apparently we're still at influence 7, which is exactly where we were when we started. So maybe the button's just broken. I don't know, but nothing changed. It's weird. Apparently me hit decreasing the influence literally did nothing, which I don't understand, but that's what happened, so... Whatever. Alright, so everybody's making it onto the border, and nobody is confident that they'll be able to do this. At all. Not even the guys up here. Why are you unconfident? Oh, just because literally everything. Alright, well, we can probably make a joint plan now, because we don't have a joint line. Alright, that's fine. So, just do something like that, and you'll be fine. You do something like that this and you'll probably be fine and you do something like that and you do something like that and you come on go all the way up north so everybody let them plan that figure that out uh, let's grab up all of these support divisions and we apparently have something improved anti-tank, okay. And we're also going to need probably a bigger air force now, so let's go and add an additional 300. Oh, there's the justification. Yeah, we're going to wait a minute because I want to increase the strength of my air force. Okay, so that is going to be added. And I think I might also, you know what, just for my own sanity... I'm going to delete everything that is under a few hundred planes, because I'm not sorting through that. And if it means my Air Force shrinks a little, then it means it shrinks a little. In fact, uh, you know what, I'll keep those. Those could come in handy once we really get into a battle. It's almost a thousand planes there. Yeah, anything that isn't above a couple hundred planes, I'm just not keeping it. Because it's so annoying to constantly sort through. I know there's some of you saying, you'll need those. I, I don't care. I, I'm sorry. I'm not sorting. It's so irritating. You need to sort through all those planes. So, I would like... Uh, wow, we have a lot of attack bombers. Like, crazy amount. Oops. And of course, these lower level ones will upgrade once they're in the field, which is why... I'm not super concerned about making sure all of them are Gen 4. Gen 2 attacks. But yeah, Gen 3 attacks, there we go. Uh, I just think if we're going to... There's a lot of troops we're going to need to fight through, so we're going to need to make sure we have a better Air Force. See, where there they go. They all just upgraded. Um, then what we have, we're going to need more than a few hundred points. I might deploy even more. This is just to start off, see if it's enough. So everybody do that. 
Let's see, do either of them have an Air Force? Because I just deployed all those multi rolls without checking. Yeah, Vietnam has an Air Force. Okay, good. So let's see if Vietnam ends up joining. I have a feeling they will. So I'm going to declare war. And I'm going to call in my allies. And just these two right now, because all the European, they'll send troops over and they'll just cause too much attrition. So there we go. Okay, so our allies are already launching attacks. Let's have... Ooh, you actually think you can do it. Go. Let's see. I'm hoping that Vietnam actually joins, to be entirely honest. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the reason being, that way I basically get to win two wars. It might be a little more difficult to win, but I basically get to do two wars without needing to justify for two wars. Assuming they call them in, which they're not currently. So that's concerning. Is it because I have troops on your border? Okay, well, we'll just justify a second war against you then. Oh, come on. Just join in. Damn, I was hoping because that would help our world tension issue a bit. Because they would join and we'd still get the penalty for, you know, in puppeting them and everything, but... Well, actually, it's annexing, technically, but we wouldn't need to deal with uh, justifying another war. Oh, I think they just got caught. Nope, that's just Laos's forces moving through Vietnam. At least we'll have plans ready. I guess I should just, maybe if I start justifying now, then they'll be like, okay, you know what, this is happening either way. We might as well do this when we have an ally. Maybe that'll force them into it. Because I need to do the justification, justification either way. Oh, there we go. That did it. Thought that would work. Because the AI knows when you're justifying on them, so... Odds are they're just going to be like, okay, might as well fight this out when I have an ally. Though we are instantly probably going to lose our air superiority, I bet. We shouldn't be. Why are we? Uh, it's probably their anti-air guns. That's alright. We have enough planes. More planes won't solve that. We just have to push. And so far we're doing relatively well. We cut them into two sections. Laos is almost out of the fight, but our progress has slowed now because of the uh, lack of air superiority, which means if we take out the troops in the south, that might take out some of their anti-air guns. It's, or, well, it depends on where they're concentrated. They could be concentrated in the north or south, but I don't know where. Um, but odds are they're spread out, so. Alright, let's end this, please. We got a nice little convenient pocket here. Perfect. Keep going. I'm seeing we're losing divisions all over, which I'm not super happy with, but that's okay. Nope, Serbia, you're not joining in. We lost 100,000 people. That is not good. I'm not happy. I mean, we have a whole nother level of conscription to go to. I'm just not because it lowers my production, but I will once we go to war. Okay. What else do I want to get? Can I get any of these? No. Alright. The stuff it is. Laos capitulated. Alright. Go. Just push up there. Take their capital. India, stop nuking. We need to repair this territory after. There we go. Yeah, I don't want to keep nuking everything. So again, we're going to keep giving this ter territory to Myanmar, um, just because I want to create a super puppet. As I've said, it worked very well with Yugoslavia. As we've seen, they have crazy big army. It's probably almost up to 200 divisions now, I'd be willing to bet. Let's actually pass a few. It's probably, you know, I want to make sure that they're able, that uh, Myanmar is able to do the same, and they were just the first one I conquered. Um, wow, 120 oil, nice. Um, so they're the first one I conquered, so that's why they're getting everything. Is that everything? Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far they haven't really built too much. Or 28, which isn't bad, I suppose. But their industry is only just now getting to Serbia or Yugoslavia's level. I um, mean, they're at 180 divisions, and we also see India. India is not getting the territory because they already have a lot of territory and a lot of manpower and a lot of industry, and they're doing very well. They're at 189 themselves, so. Yeah. 
So next we're going for Malaysia. Let's get our troops down there. 45% world tension. It's the only thing stopping us from advancing at this point. World tension. I might start doing... Oh, don't need, they can work on that themselves. I might start doing what I did previously where I just kind of play the game out a little bit on my own to allow world tension to decrease just because it's not... I, I would assume it's not particularly entertaining for all of you uh, just to watch world tension go down. I can't imagine that's too terribly fun. Let's get all this to the top priority. Make sure we're not suffering any... Let's add another unit to this. Make sure we're not suffering any inter infrastructure um, attrition stuff. And deploy them outside of Moscow. And our stability is quite good. Oh, I forgot I have the plus 10, don't I? Because I did low taxes. That's why it's so good. There we go. It's a convenient way to do our... How are we going to increase our stability? What's our penalty again? I think, is it research? Yeah, research time. And a little bit more consumer goods. Does it increase our monthly population? Yeah, by 1%. Nice. Um, we aren't suffering attrition, but our allies are because it looks like they're training. So if I were to say, let's make a united push, all of us together. They're actually pretty confident that they could probably get it done. And is Singapore worth the concern industry? <clears throat> That's a good industry, but I don't think 9 and 6 is worth the world tension. At the end of the day, at this point, we're mostly for the industry. 11.9 million manpower. At that point, we're here for the industry, right? We're not here for our for um, more manpower or anything, because there is that mod on that gives the little bit of extra um, recruitable population or non-core manpower recruitable population. So that's why giving that's why making a big puppet also makes sense because they do get an acceptable amount of the manpower rather than 0.002 percent. Um, so that's why I'm giving them the territory as well, because they do get a bit, but now they're at the point where they have the manpower, I'm just trying to give them more industry so they can produce more troops. Because as you can see, China is now going to be facing a war here, 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 and here. This isn't going to be easy for them, right? But previously I was fighting from here and here, it was two fronts they could probably hold. Now, I mean, I guess it's still technically two fronts, it's just this front has expanded. Um, so... You can see these, there's divisions there, but if I wanted to, I could easily poke through here. Very easily break through and take a lot of territory. If I concentrated my forces, I could pretty easily break through here. Um, and here we actually don't have a lot of intel. I might need some radar there. Speaking of radar, um, I can also do something really stupid. Let's do something really stupid. Let's build anti-air literally everywhere. I had this idea, because I've seen that anti-air can be incredibly effective. So you know what, let's do this. So this way, even, I know everybody's commenting I have to um, put fighters over my major cities, so that way I don't get nuked and everything. That's a good idea, but if they concentrate their fighters, they might be able to get enough air superiority. And that's going to be very difficult to do if I have anti-air guns literally in everywhere. And this is, is this a stupid idea? Yes. Is this going to work? Probably not. But... My factories are literally doing nothing else that important, so we're doing it. We are building anti-air across everywhere. And hopefully this will all be done um, by the time we go to war with NATO. I mean, as China as well, because they'll have nukes, but um, they're much further away, so it's probably going to be a little bit harder for them to get their planes in, but I don't know. And the weekly stability also means we can recover from that. Here we go. Leave in the comments, what are your thoughts about this move? Is it, a, is, it, is it stupid? I think it's stupid that I'm doing it. Anyway. Because why not? And of course, if I actually need to build something important, I'll just throw it up uh, to the top of the production chain. Or line, or whatever you want to call it. Oh, gosh. There we go. Everywhere gets an anti-air gun. Wonderful. Oh, we missed two spots. So that's what our, our industry is going to be working on now. And, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. So let's go ahead and start justifying here. Brings us up to 47. 
Oh, and of course, all of their troops start shifting around. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that at the beginning of the next episode as well, though. Where I just kind of chill out and let the world tension go down. But by the next episode, for sure, we'll have finished step one. And then I'll take some time, get world tension down. And then step two is going to be a lot quicker because it's just one war. And then step three will take a while. Because um, we have to go... Like I said, I'm probably going to move into... Iran, Kurdistan, Iraq, and Syria all have borders. Well, actually, Iraq doesn't have a border with Syria, now that I think about it. But it might be important for supply. Because I don't want to be filtering through all my supply through one region, because if it falls, we can get cut off. So I might take Iraq just for the purposes of um, building up their infrastructure and getting better supply. Um, but either way, that gives us a strong border with Turkey that we can um, actually push through rather than you know struggling here because there's lots of divisions and struggling here where there's lots of divisions. We'll force them to spread out a little bit. <clears throat> and we can use the fact that at the end of the day we have a bigger army against them. And I don't know if I'm going to make a super puppet. Part of me wants to, but part of me also thinks would it be enough? Let's see. Would it, or would I need to Okay, it might be enough. Because I'm also thinking, I'm on, I'm putting super puppets in strategic locations as well. Because um, right now, the, this exists, uh, Myanmar exists for a war with China. It's the only reason I don't particularly like making super puppets, because it makes the borders look really weird. So I don't really like making them, I only make them because they're useful, so... I still haven't decided if I'm going to make one or not, but we'll see. Oh, and wonderful, Serbia's throwing down their army. So let's go. Let's, uh, this could push it over. This could very easily push world tension over. Can I get the Air Force, please? Come on, box select. Okay. So not everybody's actually in range here. Let's get you guys here. And you guys here so two guys will go there there we go we have our full air force working with us oh I didn't call anybody in did I there we go let's see how we do oh yeah we'll break through they have a lot of divisions but they don't seem to be too terribly strong I could use nukes. That could help in this situation. This might be one of the few where I'm okay doing it. Just because it will help us break through the line. So can I get a hundred strategic bombers? And there we go. So let's speed this up a bit. Actually, might not be necessary. It seems that we've broken through here. Let's see. Nope, okay. Let's get this done. That should make it a little bit more doable to push through. Without too many losses for ourselves. We obviously need another division now. I noticed we're, we're steadily losing divisions here and there. We're at one, two, three lost. There we go. We've broken through. Let's launch another round. Speed this up again. The issue is they just have so many divisions, and so they only need to defend it from one area. Um, I might actually bring my navy out here, so that way they can't get any of these troops because they have territory over here as well. And I should probably make some use of the 152 ships that I've been building. Let's give them an admiral. So you guys are going to go on convoy raiding? Yeah, convoy raiding. Kind of... Why do you... How do you not have access to this region? Fine, just go here. Okay, don't you dare tell me you can't leave.
Okay. That's annoying. Okay. That's really... That's silly. That's actually really silly. Navy should be able to pass through there. I mean, I get it. I understand why. Because Turkey owns both sides. But... Okay. I'll have to deal with that. We'll have to take control of that region to get my navy out. I'm not going to cheat because it does technically make sense. Uh, looks like we stopped them, mostly. I think we'll be able to stop them. We just need to get to the ports. Yeah, there's a few ports. I think we'll be alright. No, you're going to go here. Wonder, will we need to take the fight over here? Probably. Ah, that's really annoying. I should probably move my naval production somewhere else in a minute. So I at least get something. Cause that's, that's... I, I get why, but it doesn't... It, it makes sense, but it's silly at the same time, because... I don't... Maybe, maybe there's something I'm unaware of, but I don't think they're gonna just stop all shit movements. Unless it, you're at war with them. I mean, maybe it'll be changed once I'm at peace again. I don't know. But, hmm. All right, can we, let's hurry this up here. Come on. Bit of a leg spike here. There we go. There we go. Taking it. They're all cut off now. <clears throat> so they won't be able to escape with these troops. There we go. Didn't need to push to the other island. Wonderful. So, now we pass a few. We will go. Boom. 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 That's everything. Yep. Okay. So now, what we're going to do, we're going to give a garrison order. Because I need to think out the next one. I need to let world tension decrease, because we're over 50, which is horrifying. Um, but also because we need to actually plan naval invasions, which means we'll need a navy. And my navy now is very limited. It's not what it was, or what it was supposed to be. So I'm going to combine what I do have. And I'm going to bring everything that I do have um, right to this port right here. And I think I also have some ships here. Yeah, so I do have some ships. They're just old and terrible. So that's great. But at least we have something. It's just everything I was producing just auto-produced here. Um... Right? All of my new ships, all my upgraded stuff, and a lot of my old stuff too. Um, but it was all being thrown right here, so now don't really know what to do. Uh, I guess, yeah, we'll just have to secure that. That's the only thing that makes this very important, because it unlocks another 150 ships for us that we very desperately need. So, unless maybe now that I'm not at war, maybe they'll, they'll let me. No, they won't. I'm just stuck here. Alright. Well, I think we are at 30 minutes now, so in the next episode, we will finish with Indonesia, and after that, we will begin preparations for China, which we now, India, as you can see, has been doing a great job. They have troops all over this border, right? They've been doing a really, really good job getting troops produced and sending them out. Um, they're at 195 divisions. Minamar is at 32. I'm hoping they start to grow a little bit quicker. So they have a lot of manpower and a lot of industry. They really should be building more than that. But maybe it's just taking them a while to get started because they maybe have some um, equipment deficits from the war. Uh, is it worth it to get these? You know what? Wait a little longer, I think. I think I can get infantry equipment now, can't I? No. What can I get? Maybe another support division? Nope. Uh, this? Nope. Tanks? Nope. You know what? Navy. Let's get some of that. Missile Cruiser 3s. Um, but yeah, with that, that's going to be it for today. So if you did enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye for now.